Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Watch that, Emily. She'll whip you into shape. We were about through this find this uh, Bible in a year thing. It's been a year and a half now, but uh, we're going to slow down when we get to the Book of Revelation. I've never done that on Sunday morning. Done it on Wednesday night. Done it on Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, and uh, I think it'll be a a good time to do it on Sunday morning. Some of our Sunday morning crowd uh, hasn't been able to come to those, and I think it would be good for us to go through the book of Revelation verse by verse. I've learned a lot of things since I taught that before, and just through experience in life and watching other people and studying more and seeing how the world is, I think that'll be good. All right, 2 John. And Third John, but we uh, we're really going to be reading from Second John. It's very interesting the way these two books are written, and if you're not careful, you'll miss it when going through them. And so I'm going to try to just teach you what these books can do for you as an individual. Second and third John. Second, it could be a church. He doesn't mention the name of the lady. Uh, it could also be a, a lady. Uh, nobody knows for sure because it doesn't say. To me, the very last line of Second John gives me the idea that it is a church. Because it says, the children of thy elect sister greet thee. It's like he's talking from his church to, but he could be talking about the children of a woman that's there in his church greet thee. And so it's it's like that so that we as a church can look at it like he's talking to all of us individually in the church. And then 3 John is written to a man. And we see a very present and modern reality in these two books about men and women. You've never heard of that before, probably in 2nd and 3rd John. Me neither. I tell you, the more... Being a preacher, you really have to study things. You, you want to be... You don't want to... Uh, I mean, I've taught these books many times. And the same old thing again. And so God gives you something else that's in there. Um, look at verse 2 of Second John. I want you to see why he writes this particular book and Third John. First four words there. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God, Son of the Father, in truth and love. These are the two things that will be uh, talked about in these two books. This second John is trying to uphold truth more because the love is plenteous. It's a woman. Love is plenteous. It's over much is the problem with this woman. Not that actual love, actual godly love can ever be too much. But it's the person on love. Well, we're just supposed to love everybody, get along with everybody, not say anything that will ever hurt anybody. You see what I mean? So he's addressing this with this lady. And then in 3 John... He's writing to a man that's too rigid. He don't want to have enough love. He's more about truth, truth, truth. Truth must be upheld or off with their heads. He's a good man. 
And it's a good woman. But they're erring both directions. They're not in the middle ground. They're not balanced. And which is much like most churches today as individuals. There's churches that are good churches. And the, I mean, the, there's balance in everything that they do. Everything's ordered very well day to day. Sorry it's not like that with me. I wish it was. but uh, Maybe someday when I don't have too many things going on, I'm learning all those things. But this is what he's... What God, at least, is trying to get across. Well, if we take these two together and try to head for that middle ground, what did Jesus say? He said, to the right and to the left is destruction, didn't he? The balanced path is the narrow path. It's the one that it's really hard for people to get into. See that uh, it's hard to uh, kill the emotions of a woman that wants to love everything and everybody. It's hard to... Um, the man that's really wants truth and he's more anal about things. It's hard to get him to, to balance out and go the direction that the woman might be pulling him. You know that's why I have a wife and she has a husband. We balance each other out. And she hangs on my every word. She has her own studies... She learns things on her own, but she always runs it by me. That's smart. It's not because I am smart. It's because the woman is more emotional and she wants to act right away on these things, you see. That's what the woman. And third John is to the man to say, hey, pay attention to the woman. Watch how she reacts to things. You don't always have to... Uh, Go to her and ask her for her input because she's always going to give it, right? Just kidding. But you observe. Observe how she reacts to things. And you as a man, she teaches you. And I know it's hard to get that from that because they're not related. It's John talking to this woman who's writing a letter to this man over here. It's hard to notice that this is what's going on here. Don't laugh at me for my drawing. I didn't, uh, this was a spur of the moment thing this morning. I didn't have time to ask my wife to draw this for me. But you've got the average female here and the average male here. And then I've got it in brackets here. I've got the right extreme here and the right extreme to the female there, left extreme here. In this area is where I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking a lot about the woman's like this, like this, and the man's like this. But I know there's opposites, some. You know, there's some women that are more kind of like the male in certain issues, but generally... Most women are in this place, and generally most men are in this place. It's like saying most men, but there is women that are taller than men. But generally, most men are taller than women, right? Okay, that's easy, isn't it? That's a good illustration. Most men are analytical, and most women are intuitive. There's pluses to both of those and minuses to both of those. I want to do all of these. Women are need-oriented. It means they're happy when their needs are met. My wife, she always wants to know where the money's coming from, if we're going to have it, if she can spend it. I mean, no, just kidding. She was just fine. You know, that's generally. The guy, he's goal-oriented. If he don't have a goal to shoot for, he's a mess. 
Depression can kick. That's why so many men suffer from depression today because they can't work. If they've got a, they've got a uh, disability or something that keeps them out of work, even if it's a mental disability, they are goal-oriented. And if you, they don't have a goal to shoot for, they're mixed up in their mind. Men are about things, about people. Men are about truth. Women are about love. We've got to shoot for in between that. We've got to hit this narrow... I know that's not a good representation of it, but we've got to hit a narrow place in that, between that. A lot of things come from that. Ladies, it is good to study your Bible. It is good to know, but everything that you learn, you should filter it through your husband. If you don't have a husband, then that's what you got church for. There's guys here, you can ask me anytime, and it's not because I'm smarter than you, any of that. I just know that love can get corrupted. And I also know that truth can get corrupted. I want to say to the men too. Men, if you don't have a wife, that's what the church is for. You know, that's, that's why God called us together because there was always men without wives and women without with the church, we're men and women. We're made up of emotional beings and rational beings. We need both. We need both. Love can get corrupted because we don't want to tell somebody when they're doing something that could hurt them. That's really what we're commanded to do. We are to speak. Um, man, I know it's hard to tell a homosexual that he may die of AIDS. It's hard. But is love telling them that or letting them die of AIDS? Giving them the opportunity to be reproved. The Bible says the church reproves the world of sin. When we stop reproving at all and we're just love... You get the world that we have today. It's out of balance. You could still love them. You could still love them and you keep the lines of communication open. You keep uh, showing them your love for them, but they must know what the Bible says. They must know the truth. They have to know it. So this lady, this elect lady... This was her issue. How to anybody in. And uh, it would bring false doctrines into the local church there. And it caused problems. And he would tell her, he told her, this comes from a good place. But if we leave off truth, then it's not really love. The Old Testament balances out mercy and truth together. The New Testament, it's love and truth. Without love or mercy, it's not even really truth. Without truth, it's not really love and mercy. If somebody is getting ready to fall off of a cliff and you say, Is that love? Well, I'm afraid somebody might hear me. I don't want anybody to think I'm weird or anything. Oh, love would be, I don't care who hears me. I don't care who sees me. I care about that person. When's the last time you told somebody they was about to fall? 
It's very needful. Very needful. Men, they want to wait a while to answer a question. My wife, she wants an answer right now. When we're up there visiting with uh, Jenny and Preacher, it's the same thing. Jenny gets so mad at him. She said one day, why are you the way you are? <laughs> Me and Preacher, we, and all men probably, we're of the, think about this, I won't have to change the answer three times between now and then. Can I get an amen out of some guys? Think this thing through. You, you see where I'm going with it? Think this thing through. There's, there's things that needs to be looked at here. What, how should I, my emotions or on my studied out, this is what makes sense. Because when we're emotional, a lot of things we do don't make sense. We do things we wouldn't normally do when we're emotional. Second John, third John. This is what this will give you. It will give you insight into that. If you're not married, either one, man or woman, this will still help you. <coughs> There are godly men in your life. There are godly women in your life. You can find the balance. You, you have to want that balance. Everybody's seen Eli. Got the two scars on his face. He got in a fight with a bear. He was standing up in his little Power Wheels truck and Ava was driving. And the dad wants to get all the power he can get out of vehicles and I rewired this thing and I got so much power going to this thing it might pop a wheelie. Bad, bad, bad. If I'd have consulted my wife... Maybe, maybe I would have settled that down a little bit. But I just bought him a new John Deere trailer. Oh, he was so excited about this trailer. He couldn't wait to hook this up to his power wheels. Oh, the excitement that was there was just massive. I go out there, I get home, and he's pulling it around and just having a blast. He gets stuck because you can't back it up. You know, he's three years old. He don't know how to back a trailer. So Ava, she wants to drive. I said, Bub, you need to give her a chance. She can show you how to do this. She's older. You need to let her drive. After he cried for about 20 minutes, he finally let her drive. <laughs> he kept saying, it's my truck. She is so excited, she don't even wait till he sits down. <laughs> and the power this thing's got now is unbelievable. She hit the gas, and he just done a double flip out the back of it. Landed face first on his brand new John Deere trailer. <laughs> this, just to tell you some things about emotions, and to be careful about your emotions. I pick him up, and uh, I'm saying, you're tough, you're okay, and I mean, he's shaking, <laughs> shaking like, I mean, it, you could see the, I mean, it was already starting and you could tell that it hurt, and I said, bub, it's okay, these things happen, just get back in it and drive it. No, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't like Grave Digger. Ava, she's a mess. She's crying. 
she's telling him sorry. You know, she couldn't believe that that happened. And I got her over and said, these things happen. He's tough. He can take this. I said, remember the other week when he pushed you off the bed? <laughs> Trying to rationalize things, see? That's the way God wants us to do in our Christian life. Calmly in the middle. Let's think about this a minute. Ava was running to the house. She was going to run to her bedroom and just let all those emotions just flood her. I said, you get back here. And she was so glad she did because a few minutes and she's fine. And the next morning, Eli's back out there on that thing, driving it like nobody's business. Let them kids be a lesson to us, okay? Let them kids be a lesson. Let's all stand this morning. I'll read one verse here as we're bowing our heads. This is the only verse in the Bible that defines love. It says, and this is love, that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. And this is the commandment we've been talking about for weeks, months, and other. John, in his old age, they had to carry him to church. He's up in years. He's in his 90s and he, he didn't preach anymore except for just to give a, a uh, word of wisdom here and there. And every time he would ask for somebody to carry him up to the front of the church. We have this in church history. People wrote about this. The Apostle John, he would say the same thing every time. He would raise his hands like this and he would say, Little children, love one another. And he'd ask to be took back to his seat. A few weeks would go by to come to the front. And he would say the same thing. They'd carry him up there and he'd say, Little children, love one another. After so long a time, somebody asked him, said, Why is it the same message every time? He said to them, Because if you do nothing else, this is enough. If you do nothing else, this is enough to love one another. God says that this morning. This is the commandment that we have had from the beginning and take that away from you. Just as the Apostle John. Look, the Apostle John started out like Peter. He was called one of the sons of thunder. He asked Jesus, do you want me to call down fire from heaven and consume the Samaritans? And he changed into this. That's what Jesus can do for you if you'll let him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this this morning. We need it. We need to keep building upon this principle. Help us to be balanced. We know we've got to be able to... to uh, truth is not truth without love and love is not love. We have to say the hard things sometimes. But if it comes from a good place, comes from a place of compassion and care, somebody's getting ready to fall off of a cliff, we don't care what people think of us, we're going to holler, we're going to do whatever we have to do to get them to realize they're about to step on a snake, fall off a cliff, run into something. It must be what defines us. And then to have love one for another just confirms it. It makes it really sink in. People want to push, their, push away from us because we have truth without love a lot of times. Let it not be so with us. Let us look at in perverse generation. We want to step up our game in our individual lives. Help us to seek for this balance and we'll have it. Bless our time of fellowship here today. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Thank you all. Let's, let's fellowship.